hey guys welcome back i've created this cheat sheet video for you guys so that you and me can refer anytime the topic that i've listed here uh, there are multiple terms that we generally forget so it is a quick refresher whenever required okay, let's start with what machine learning is in machine learning we have basically three major type of variable one, one is called the input variable which are denoted by x and the output variable which is denoted by y then and the model is denoted by function of input data function of x and the model generally introduces some errors which is denoted by e so the machine learning model objective is to minimize the error while predicting the output based on the input data okay based on the input and output data relationship they can, uh, our models can be classified as parametric or non-parametric parametric models are called linear models which try to find out the linear relationship between input and output data by generating the coefficients while non-parametric or non-linear model try to generalize the model while finding out the non-linear mapping for example dishes and trees or some other models or uh, which we are going to see in, in the upcoming sections okay based on how the models training are done or how they learn uh, the model uh, can be class or le machine learning training can be classified into uh, supervised or unsupervised at very high level supervised is one, the one in which we have input data is the label data okay and uh, it is like explicitly we are giving the training to the model other one is uh, the example of supervised disease entry or naive base the unsupervised is uh, like clustering where we find out the structure of the data and finding the patterns into the data without the support of any humanly labeled data okay there are other type of uh, latest training uh, types are or uh, the uh, machine learning uh, classification can be reinforcement learning semi supervised self supervised transfer meta so it is being evolved and the new type of learnings are coming in so reinforcement learning is the one which wherein the concept of policy and uh, reward come into picture based suppose the output is incorrect or correct based on that the internal hyper parameters are tuned automatically in case of semi supervised learning it is kind of a mix of supervised and unsupervised learning some uh, some data is labeled and some data is labeled okay uh, in case of self supervised learning uh, if, uh, an example of self supervised learning is google bird wherein the relationship between the input data itself is learned and uh, during the training itself some sections of the data is uh, made hidden to the model then model it itself finds out that what data is missing and how to predict it based on the input data relationship with each other other can be a transfer learning where the model as models are trained on one specific data or the general public domain data and it can be used to uh, specific other type of domain now when we train the concept of underfitting and overfitting comes into the picture as you can see in the image itself a underfitting model is the one on the left side wherein it is classifying very poorly these uh, crosses okay this is a appropriate fitting scenario where only the error is very less only two uh, crosses are uh, misclassified otherwise it is properly classified and on the right side model has learned too much of the input data that it is not able to generalize okay so if, if i have to give the words to underfitting this is a poor inductive reasoning from input data and poor generalization in case of overfitting learning the input data details and noise so the, our model actually in case of overfitting learns the noise also so let's talk about how to avoid uh, overfitting and underfitting underfitting generally does not happen but of course we have to know how it is uh, taken care in case of underfitting uh, i mean the parameters in the models are increased the uh, which in turn actually increases the complexity of the model and uh, more training is to be given to avoid the underfitting overfitting is a very common problem in machine learning uh, the methods are early stopping stop when you detect that the model is uh, not learning properly or not validating properly during the training using the cross validation pruning is another technique wherein you just remove the nodes which do not have uh, which do not actually add less predictive power to the model uh, you can add different type of regularizations and you can actually increase the data by augmenting the data when more parameters are added to a model it becomes more complex and in that case bias goes down and variance becomes high for example in case of a linear regression when more polynomial terms are added it becomes more complex so the bias becomes high the bias becomes low and the and the variance becomes high 
so if we have to if we draw the slope then the bias has a negative first order derivative and variance has a positive side of slope okay in other terms bias which is the bias simplifies the assumption made by a model to make the target function easier to approximate variance on the other hand is also called the sensitivity it means how much change in the input data is actually detected by the model in the output and the, what is the trade off a trade off actually is a tension between the error produced by the bias and various yes the error is produced by high bias as well as high variance okay so when the bias in the in the screen that you can see when the bias is high the model is in the underfitting zone when the model is learning less uh, change into the data and when the variance is high it is a case of overfitting when a small change is actually affecting the output okay so it actually learns the noise as well and that area in between these two is called the best optimized zone okay to to detect it uh, total error is calculated by using the formula bias square plus variance plus irre irre the error which cannot be reduced okay and this is the zone so this chart is very useful to calculate the bias and variance trade off where which is a chart of model complexity versus the error produced by the model okay so i will talk about some few more terms before we go ahead one is the ols it is called ordinary least square it is used in case of regression uh, models okay uh, in what we do is we find out we draw the generalized term the term the model learning line this is the black line we find out the error of with respect to the uh input data whatever the error is we will square them up and uh, find out the ordinary least square classification we use a maximum likelihood estimation method uh, likelihood means we can say the probability also mle is used to find the estimators that minimize the okay now let us jump to the linear uh, regression which is a linear model as you can see in the on the top left it assumes a linear relationship between input and output that is that is why it is called the linear regression it okay uh, the equation for a linear regression is is y is the output is equal to beta then whatever the number of parameters uh, the polynomial equation is okay and beta is generally the bias con bias coefficient in the xy in the straight line the number of dimension is a is termed as the complexity of the model if here in the in this case the complexity is i linear regression means uh, if i have to define linear regression means estimating the coefficient uh, from the training data which include gradient descent or ordinary least squares there are variations of uh, linear regression which are which are called uh, lasso regression and ridge regression which are also called as l1 and l2 regularization as well uh, they are used to reduce the complexity of the model uh, in case of lasso or the l1 uh, regularization uh, ordinary least square method is used to minimize the coefficient and while in case of l2 or the ridge ols method is used to minimize the square sum of the coefficient okay the advantages of linear regression is which is very simple uh, and uh, the lasso and ridge can be used to avoid the overfitting and this can this variations can also be used used for feature selection when there is a collinearity into the input the use cases are uh, if you uh, whenever you want to predict the real valued data for example you want to predict the sales or how much waiting time will be there in case of a call center logistic regression is a classification type which is very go to for binary classification as you can see in the image there are two classes are given 0 and 1 it uh, uses the maximum likelihood estimation to predict the values which are close to 1 and all other classes are uh, gone to 0 in case of binary classification the data preparation is required you have to remove the outliers and the noise and probability estimation to uh, binary in case of classification and uh, use cases may include uh, for example you want to score whether the customer will purchase or not a product or say for example you want to predict whether the guy is a loan defaulter or is going to default the loan or not okay the advantages can be it is a very it is very it is also very simple just like linear regression if l1 and l2 regularization is used then it becomes robust to outliers and noise which is required generally in case of data preparation for logic stick regression and the output probability numbers which come up they are using that you actually can sort the output based on those numbers now let's talk about the gradient descent which is a very common method uh, i'm not talking much about deep learning here but gradient descent is very commonly used so you should know about it and which is very commonly asked uh, in case of uh, gradient descent you find out the you try to minimize the 
error the process is first of all you initialize the theta with uh, zero or some random value then calculate the cost uh, function j theta and then calculate the gradient if uh, based on the gradient cutoff based on uh, the slope or the gradient you up update the weight and you thereby you gradually uh, reduce your error when you just keep on going down till you reach to a minima the minima can be a global minima or local minima so there are some tips while uh, achieve the minima quickly uh, you can change the learning rate okay and uh, you can rescale the input variables you can use the sgd stochastic gradient descent okay now let's talk about uh, some types of gradient descent one is the batch gradient descent batch gradient descent works on a batch it whatever the cost is coming out of that batch just it just sums all of those or averages all of those okay but it suffers with a local minima problem so a stochastic gradient descent comes into the picture which applies the same thing it updates the parameter over each observation okay it solves the local minima problem but it is very slow so therefore uh, it's slow compared to batch gradient descent therefore mini batch gradient descent comes into the picture which applies the parameter update on the small small batches so it is a uh, it is in between the stochastic gradient descent as well as batch gradient descent there are some other gradient descent methods as well which can be momentum nestro ada guard ada delta or ada madam is one of the most common one which is termed as adaptive moment estimation nee base is used for classification it is based on the base theorem which uses posterior and prior probabilities of the input selects the best hypothesis h given the data d assuming there is no interaction between feature now that there is no interaction between the feature makes it naive there are some variation which are which I have taken from the escalon these are called gaussian multinomial and bernoulli uh gaussian works with the uh, gaussian data distribution uh in the input multinomial is generally used for multi class classification and bernoulli is used for binary classification advantages it is very fast and the use cases come as spam email classification and news and article classification and a lot of other textual classifications now let's talk about the knn or k nearest neighbor this is also a classification technique it it is based on the principle that if you are similar to your neighbors then you are one of them okay the predictions are made by searching the key similar distance according to a distance and summarizing the output but what distance the distance generally used in this case is euclidean or manhattan euclidean is used when the uh, when the data types are similar and manhattan is used when the data types are different now in case of regression uh, the output can be mean and for classification it can be most common class uh, one thing that to note is it suffers from curse of dimensionality therefore it is important you reduce the features during the data preparation and uh, rescale or standardize or normalize the a uh, data also you need to handle the missing data when you are using k nearest neighbor okay the advantage is is effective when the training data is very large non learning phase because uh, it's, you have to just compare the feature with your neighbor and uh, it is robust to noise and no need to remove the outliers the use cases which is very commonly uh, used in case of recommender engines and in the customer behavior prediction anomaly uh, anomaly detection it is uh, very commonly used now let's talk about the lda or linear discriminant analysis for multi class classification lda is a most preferred uh, linear technique it's a linear technique remember lda assumes the data distribution is gaussian so that you have to actually do while during the data preparation the predictions are made using the bayes theorem shown in the top on the right side which gives us a discriminant function or called latent variables for every class k then we find out the conditional probability with uh, gaussian, gaussian distribution the formula is given, shown on the top, uh, bottom right the class with the largest discriminant value is our output class okay there are two variations generally used uh, quadratic and regularized uh, discriminant analysis the quadratic da is used when each class has its own variation estimate while the regularized da is used when the regularization is done into the uh, variation estimate okay the data preparation is required into this case you have to review and modify the univariate distribution to the gaussian distribution which is required here standardize data so that it has the same variance and removes the noise and outliers the advantage is it can be used for dimensionality redu dimensionality reduction which is a very common use case of lda 
by keeping the variable uh, latent variable as new variable okay let's talk about cart classification and regression tree as the name itself says it can be used for both classification and regression in case in the sql and these are termed as decision tree class is it's a non linear method and all linear uh, algorithms are non parametric and are more flexible they are not sensible to outlier this is very good feature good thing of uh, non linear classifier and they do not require any specific shape like gaussian distribution of the input the input data okay that this is a tree tree is made by greedy recursive binary splitting approach every tree is taken and they are recursively split it into binary data based on every input uh, variable as it can be used for regression and classification regression uh, for in case of regression the cost function is the sum of square errors and in case of for classification gini index is used which is the which is a uh, purity indicator for the leaves uh, you can see in the top in the right side in the bottom entropy is shown on the zero here and the one the, the entropy is least and the probability is highest and in between there is a maximum entropy and the maximum low, uh, maximum impurity uh, the advantage is easy to interpret no overfitting with pruning if you do prune your tree you do not it, does not overfit it can work for both regression and classification and can take any type of input type of uh, data whether it can be categorical it can be numerical okay let's talk about svm or support vector machine the svm is uh, go to for high performance with little very little tuning in this in this case uh, we make hyperplanes based on the input data a hyperplane is selected to separate the points in the input variable space by their largest margin the closest data points which are defined that largest margin they are called support vectors but in practical large this uh, real data is not perfectly separable that's why uh, some violation happens and we take variable as c in the equation generally which is called a violation of margin okay the prediction function is the sign distance of new input x to the separation hyperplane w formula is given and uh, how it learns is the hyperplane learning is done by transforming the problem into using the linear average and minimizing the error variation is uh, the variations of svm are uh, linear polynomial and radial uh, these are also called the kernels of uh, svm kernels the advantages of svm is it allows non linear separation with non linear kernels we, when we use non linear kernel the separation of uh, non linear data is that which is a very good which is very good works uh, when the data is very high dimensional or multiple type of multiple input data is given when the number of inputs are input features are high then it is a very good method it is robust to multi collinearity and it is robust to over class or fitting uh, but important thing is the it is it works with numerical data only so in case you have uh, categorical data in, in the input you have to first convert them to the numerical data then we come to the ensemble techniques uh, let's start with the bagging and random forest bagging uh, ensemble is actually a technique where we use very simple multiple simple algorithm and uh, combine them to find out which one is the which one is giving the best output the bagging stands for bootstrap aggregating b a g g bag it can reduce the variance of high variance model we used uh, multiple weak learners and give them various bootstrap data what bootstrapping is uh, let us assume we have the data in uh, shown here we take multiple bootstrap samples and replace the we take them with replacement when we extract the samples out of this data we replace them back okay so every week learner uh, so every learner get some data to it for learning it can the data can repeat that is very important in case of bootstrapping uh, decision trees or the random forest is a kind of uh, in this case uh, multiple sub samples or multiple multiple sub samples are created using bootstrapping uh, when multiple cart models are given are created the multiple samples are given to multiple cart models but the important thing here is to make this bagging techniques work everyone has to be a weak learner which means everyone should have every learner has the same data then everyone will learn the same thing and it will lead to poor classification okay the advantage is it does not make any assumption about underlying distribution of data and therefore it can handle the collinearity in the features also cart 
which actually uh, if they are not prone they are uh, prone to classific uh, they are prone to overfitting but in case of uh, bagging or the random forest they are robust to overfitting or the missing values and they can run in parallel because every weak learner is learning independently performance is as good as svm but easier to interrupt we can break it anytime there and use cases are unlimited which is very commonly used uh, technique random forest so i have written as multiple business application which needs classification let's talk about the ada boost at a boost uh, which is a kind of uh, boosting technique which ada boost was the first successful boosting algorithm developed for binary classification in this case decision tree with one level are made which is also called as uh, decision stumps in this uh, formula you can see ft is the weak learner correcting uh, which corrects the error and we just sum up every uh, weak learner error to get the output let's see the process in the learning process first we initialize the uh, weight for every training set the v by one by n calculate the misclassification rate for every stump then we calculate uh, we compare compute the stage value the stage value which uh, which is a natural log of uh, 1 minus e by e this uh, this is epsilon then update the instance weights uh, correct uh, we give more weightage to the wrongly predicted values now uh, in, now this is this whole learning our learning steps are repeated for every weak learner until there is any further improvement as you can see in the diagram uh, the first one uh, is misclassified uh, pl this plus and minus are misclassified like this then it is uh, another weak learner is cl uh, wrongly classifying this minus value same way we just sum uh, sum of all the errors and then in the in the last one to get the maximum to get the best output they are sensitive to outliers so outlier should be removed and it is uh, without tuning they give high performance thanks guys for watching if you like it just let me know if there is anything any comment if you like dislike you let me know if i missed anything of course i cannot complete everything in a very small video and also i'm planning to make uh, something on deep learning if you want to include some more topics as part of the cheat sheet or reference material you just let me know the topics i'll cover them up thank you